Yeah, thank you. I thank you, choir, for that wonderful rendering of Charles Dickens' poem. And uh, he's one of my uh, favorite writers, uh, novelist. And uh, it was surprising to see and, uh, when Keith uh, told me that we're going to sing this as an anthem. And it was by, and it is by Charles Dickens. I was surprised because uh, I, mean, I never knew that he wrote poems. And uh, I thank uh, all of you for giving me this opportunity, especially uh, uh, the board, Reverend Deborah Morgan, and all of the staff. And uh, I'm grateful for being with me through my journey. And here I am, and thank you. I thank God also for the same. And uh, today is Angelo's birthday, so it's wonderful. And uh, so I was happy that he was able to uh, take part in this worship service and read the scripture for us. And uh, I thank whoever did that. And. Uh, The scripture never dies. Things, one of the things that never die is the word of God. It still breathes. I was blown away by the power and the wealth of spirituality or spiritual practices depicted in this text. It was made up of many questions answers to questions and loads of awe-striking insights. Many words and images popped out from this text and captured my interest, such as the ten lepers and the one return. Made clean, made you well, Samaritan, foreigner, praising God and thanksgiving. But something was camouflaged within the text, and I invite all of you to work together and spot that something which is hidden within these words, the words that still breathes, even today, to our context. Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, come talk to us through these words. Make yourself visible and me invisible. Amen. This is a story of stopping and seeing. As I watch from my terrace, sipping my coffee with a biscuit, they leave the green colored building which was located in the corner of the hospital campus where I was living as a kid. They come in groups to receive free medical assistance and supplies provided by the missionaries. I don't know when they come, but when I come back from school, I can see them leave. They will have to walk a long distance to reach their camp, which is outside of the city. And on their way back, they will beg for arms and reach home late in the night. The traditions, beliefs, and practices were similar to that of the Old Testament days. Lepers live outside the camp or the city, and thus Jesus engages them outside the village on his journey to Jerusalem. They have to bellow out for any need, including asking for mercy, because they have to keep a distance from the community. The missionaries stop and saw the need 
and responded so that almost all of the lepers from all over the state traveled towards this particular building and it was the only place that they will be accepted and cared. They not only come for themselves, but for their kids who are clean from leprosy though, need other medical attention. The best day of the week, which is Saturday for us, arrives and we kids of the staff and volunteers of the particular hospital will go down to the open ground and play. As a bunch of kids from that building look at us and smile, only to pull back by their parents. We kids would interact words and smile, smiles, but not touch each other. There was an invisible wall built within both of our minds that prevented this contact. A wall within the minds of us and them. At this moment I am reminded of the image of the Presbyterian Hospital lobby. My first visit to the hospital days before the death of the Ebola patient along with Reverend Deborah Morgan. She took me there. During the fall of, this happened during the fall of 2014. And a few days after this visit, during, and during our staff lunch in church, someone said that the first thing that the government would do is to shut down DFW airport if. I felt a chill down my spine as I thought, oh, I am stuck here with my family. A few days later, I was in an ecumenical prayer service and it was a very solemn moment, a service of hope and prayer at North Park Presbyterian Church. We prayed. We prayed for those in Dallas and around the world who are waiting to see if they have contacted the Ebola virus and who wait with those who have already contacted. It was a moment of remembrance for me to pray along with the Dallas City Mayor and also with Reverend Deborah Morgan and many others for the city. It was a cry for mercy over the city. God be the light in this darkness and grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour was our prayer. A few days later came the let us not escalate the fear campaign. And now back to the original story, at sunset, we all go home, wash, eat, and go to bed early to be ready for the worship next morning. After we leave the play area, those kids from that green colored building will come out to play, and their parents will unpack their supplies in the front yard of the building. Now it is their time because it is the time that they will not be troubled or questioned for their visible presence. The time that they could come out behind the wall of the building. The time when no one is around. Some of them who got healed had been taught to keep themselves clean. And they will start cleaning themselves with the supplies that they got from the hospital. And it was a very graphic picture for us kids. They will wrap their fingerless hands and toeless foot with cotton and guards to cover those ugly looking limbs. This process of cleaning and getting ready continues late into the night. 
And when they finish, they sleep in, sleep in the front yard of the green building in a group, as a group. And if Jesus was walking by that group, he would have stopped by them on hearing their cry in their heart. He would have listened to their cry. Whenever Jesus confronted with human needs, he was moved in his guts, moved in his heart, the seat of compassion. Whenever Jesus was moved, Jesus performed miracles, healed the blind, taught the ignorant, raised the dead, fed the hungry, and cleansed the lepers. As the sun rises, we could hear the joyful noise of the kids having a good time under the roadside water tap, having a bath and enjoying their time. And we, in our bathrooms, in few minutes, we get ready at our home and head towards the church. And on our way to church, we could see those kids with their families slowly heading in the same direction. It resembled the way the fellow travelers of Jesus saw the lepers along the way to the temple. Myself, my brother, and two sisters playfully reached the church, and as my siblings head towards the Sunday school building, I go to the church office and collect that day's handbills, which has a list of religious events of the week around the city. We do not have the practice of printing a bulletin, but the order of service will be on a wooden board in the front of the church. So I stand in front of the building and start distributing the handbills and could see the same kids playing around in front of the church and their parents sitting in the front of the church begging for alms from those who enter the church, which is a common sight in our part of the world. They were dressed fully. They have dressed their wounds with cotton and gauze. They looked clean on the face and body. Their hair was neatly done with sufficient oil applied to it. Everything that they received from the hospital, from the doctors, from the nurses, and from the missionaries made them clean. The hands and feet of Jesus were in work for them through those missionaries. I don't know if they had dipped themselves seven times in a pond like Naaman, but I have seen them and I see them clean. I was able to see the works of the Good Samaritan who stopped to see the plight of, the pe of these people who were lepers. And at the chiming of the hour, they will line up in front of the church and take part in the worship service. They will sing, or if not hum, along with the congregation, the hymns and the lyrics which were rendered in honor and glory of God. This gesture of them of their, the, uh, their gesture showed their acknowledgement or the confession of God's existence. It was the response that bore the witness of God's grace, power, and love. It was spontaneous, natural. It revealed the joy, jubilation, delight, and the sense of wonder. I could see the emotions such as awe, fear, desire, exaltation in their worship. 
they were articulating their emotions and feelings through their praise to God that at that moment they never seemed flattery or manipulative because they were not fully healed they were not fully cured but were thankful that they had someone who stopped by and saw them their praise was not for their needs but they were praising god for what they got from those samaritans and the men and women of god and during the sermon they will go back to their previous positions sit and listen to the word and then during the offering time as the offertory bag is passed around they will cry out to the elder to come out of the church towards them as the bag is stretched they will line up to give their offering it was a free will act that revealed their desire to give back something in offering to God who the missionaries worshiped they want to give back to the goodness that they received at the hospital they want to give thanks by their singing and praising and some money from the little that they could collect from begging I've been watching this happen for years and years and years. And as years passed by, I saw the number decline. The number of lepers declined. The kids grew up to be with the other children in the Sunday school, and today the church entrance is empty of such children, and the hospital is empty and waiting. leprosy is almost eradicated i believe that their praise and thanksgiving made them well the text we heard read the luke the preacher is doing a dual job i refer to him as a preacher because he used a lot of scriptural references in his narrative in many different ways i too go along with the scholars and the commentators who say that luke through his preaching was projecting a picture of the past events and as it happened and is also trying to convey a message of some kind he narrates the healing of the lepers the good samaritan and then merges these two stories in this chapter and tells the third one moreover in the three stories it was seeing that matters jesus saw these lepers good samaritan saw the man in need and the leper saw that something has happened to him he was clean and all responded according to what they saw luke keeps his narrative compelling and interesting through his skill in using contrasts in this case the one thankful leper a foreigner a samaritan leper with the other nine lepers who were natives friends when i came to this country i left my family back in india and was always feeling lonely i used to keep myself logged on to skype all night listening to the ambient noise jedi running around 
angel of fighting with him and will be lying down in my bed with tears rolling down. I was in a very awful shape physically and mentally. It was the time of the year when everyone got so excited about one thing, the Thanksgiving meal, the first fall that I'm here in US. The Thanksgiving meal with their friends and family. Here in this, my loneliness became a trauma. And at that moment, someone stopped and saw me. They saw my plight. Someone I have never known than in one class in my seminary. She invited me to be with her family for Thanksgiving. Her mother, brothers, friends shared the table with me. a true disciple. Reverend Arthur who preached here was also in the table. He was also in invited for that. It was Kathy Bouchard. Now, Reverend Kathy Bouchard. I thank her. Stop and see the need and the need that were met. Stop and see the goodness of God for us to be in this country where Ebola is present in the labs and not spreading. Stop and see the right, the privilege, the advantage, the immunity and the possibilities that God is offering and have had offered us in this country. Maybe this time, this text is breathing and is inviting us to stop, see, and remember those moments when we cried for a need, those moments that we heard a cry of need, those moments that we stopped and saw the need. Those moments that someone stopped for us. Remember those moments that we, we stopped and saw the goodness of God, the providence of God, the grace love, mercy of God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for this opportunity to remember your greatness, your love, the goodness that you showed. Thank you for all the good things. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, I would like to invite anyone who would like to show their gratitude to God and give thanksgiving to come forward, or you want to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ, or recommit to yourself, or join us, a wonderful community, a community of faith. Please come forward as we sing the hymn, Invitation to the Christian, Invitation to the Christian Life, hymn number 602, O Master, O Master, let me walk with thee.